Welcome to the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Here's your host, Jason A. Meiske. Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode 82 of the Sample Chapter Podcast with the lovely Iris Long. If you find yourself at a low point in your life right now, or perhaps you've recently experienced loss, then I believe you're going to gain a lot of value from today's interview and the book that Iris is going to be reading from. It's it's an incredible book. It's a true story. And, oh my gosh, you know, I'm just going to wait and we'll talk more about that here in just a minute. So stay tuned. Anyway, once again, this is the Sample Chapter Podcast. The show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Please follow us on Facebook and Twitter where I share every episode and sometimes little extras, tidbits, maybe even some inside information about upcoming authors, one of which I'm going to talk about here in just a second. Uh, The show is also available on most all podcast platforms as well as YouTube, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Speaking of, I have a favor to ask. Actually, two favors. If you find an episode that you enjoy, you know, so you got a new author that you're you become interested in, and uh, you like it, well then by all means share that episode, so that way more people can hear about this author and this book, because all authors, regardless of their experience, you know, whether they're an indie or a traditional author, we're all still looking for readers. We're all still looking for people, and this is this is one of those opportunities where. Anybody out there could hear about an author for the first time. So yeah, if you if you like an episode, be sure to share it and tell your friends about it. Likewise, if because of this show you find a book that you like, make sure you go and review it. Go on wherever it is uh, you like to share that, whether it's Goodreads, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever. Go in there, leave a review. Um, if you like, you can tell them. Tell people that you found this book because of the Sample Chapter Podcast. But it's not a necessity, you know, it's not something you have to do, you know, just because you found about it, found out about it here. I just want to make sure that you're going to leave a review because that is another method for authors to find new readers, is when they see, hey, this book's got a bunch of reviews, there's a lot of people who enjoy this book. So, do that as a favor to not just me, but for every author who's been a guest on the show so far. Well, in personal news, I'm still dealing with insurance after our accident last week. Thankfully, my wife and I were uh, we're both actually doing really well. Uh, been a little stiff and sore, but I don't know. I'm beginning to think part of that is because of the massively busy week we've had as well. You know, also thankfully, our son ended up he had a, a spare vehicle that he's been able to lend to us, so that's been that's been nice. The funny thing is though is that man, what a, the the week turned into a a, really a massively busy week for both of us, my wife and I. What with insurance calls, doctor visits, my wife began her internship um, <laughs> at the same hospital where we spent all day after the accident. My work is particularly busy this time of year. We have a, an influx of business that always comes through this time of year. So that's been crazy as well. But you know, what's what's great is in the midst of all this craziness, I had an opportunity to do what is, so far, my biggest interview to date. I mean, I'm talking, you know, bucket list author. Uh, Oh my gosh. And I was blown away. It just, it was so incredible. Uh, This is an author who's been on the New York Times bestseller list for more than 20 years. And last year, had a blockbuster movie in The Meg. (laughs) That's right. If you know who that is, then yes, I'm talking about author Steve Alton. Oh, man. I mean, that interview will be coming real soon. Man, (laughs) the funny thing is, I'm excited and also hesitant to go back and fully listen to that episode and do the edits. Because I checked the audio and it sounds fine, but, oh, man, I'm worried that I just did nothing but fanboy all over him, you know. And he said I did fine. Everything turned out great, but. Yeah, you know, you know, authors, you know, we, we always doubt ourselves. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, that episode's going to be coming in just the next, sometime here in the next couple weeks, probably sooner than later. It depends on what the schedule, how the schedule lines up. So make sure you're subscribed to the show so you don't miss out when that interview with Steve Alton comes up real, real soon. 
I almost forgot. I do. I almost forgot our sponsors. I do want to make sure and say thank you to you store all our longtime sponsor all the way back to from the beginning. Uh, if you're looking for self storage in the Warrensburg area, make sure you check out you store all at you store all.net. That is the letter U S T O R A L L.net. They have climate control, non climate control. It's fully fenced, gated access, well lit all night long with LED lighting and they're solar powered. So, I mean, you're talking about a clean and green facility. Like I said, check them out at ustorall.net to learn more. I also want to thank Scrivener Writing Software. If you know what that is, then you know how amazing this software is. I use it every day with my writing. Uh, I've found so much use in all of their platforms, whether it's on my desktop, whether it's on my laptop, or whether it's using the mobile app on my phone. The Scrivener keeps everything that I need for my story right there in one place. I don't have to search. I don't have to scroll. I don't have to do anything. It's all, all of my research is within reach, as their advertisement says. And I, I just love it. I think if you don't know what it is, I think you're going to love it too. So make sure you click on the link in the show notes so you can find out more. And if you're interested, if you want to try it out, make sure you use the code CHAPTER to save yourself 20% on your desktop version. Of course, I'm also going to thank my friends at Pop Goes the Culture Network. Get yourself on over or click on the show notes for popgoestheculture.com. Tons of great podcasts, blogs, everything pop culture. It's all available right there. So many fun things to do and to listen to and to check out. And I I just love that they've picked up this show and they share every episodes every week. So make sure you go check them out. All right. Well, well, as I talked about at the beginning, our, our author this week is Christian nonfiction author Iris Long. Man, I mean, where to begin with Iris? She's just, she's such a strong and determined and a really lovely woman. Her first book, Showered by Grace, which is the one you're going to hear from today, it deals in grief, it deals in love, and it deals in, well, as the title says, grace. You know, uh, it, it's, it's an incredible book and uh, one I highly recommend. You're going to hear all about the incredible story of how this book came together and not just how the book itself came together, but how many things fell into place to make the book happen. You know, from sitting down at the desk, just following this little inkling inside herself, that something inside herself saying, I need to write this. I need to write this book and share my story to the you know the final product i mean it's it's an incredible story one that you're going to love and it's just full of heart you know we we talk about that we talk about so many other things and you know another thing she talks about and this kind of goes back to what i was talking about at the beginning you know and you you the listener and your point of life right now prior to the events of this book you know she had really ex- accepted rejection in her life as a normalcy and because of that, her self-image had become had become something that was a result of what she thought was normal. And so, you know, I want to encourage you out there that regardless of what your particular religious beliefs, or if you even have a religious belief, I encourage you to hold on. Don't give up. You know, there are people out there who really are going through the same things you are, who do understand what you're going through. And if you if you need someone to talk to, you know, by all means, reach out to me. My email is samplechapterpodcast at gmail.com. I'll be happy to correspond with you. Reach out to anyone, a loved one, a friend. You know, make a post on uh, on the my Facebook page or the uh, the sample chapter Twitter. You know, reach out. People will respond. People will help you. Just about anywhere you go, I believe there are good people out there in the world who will help you. And I just want to make sure that you know that you are valued and that uh, you are loved. <laughs> you know, and that's just something I want to make sure that you, the listener, hear from me. Because I think it's it's a good message coming out of this book as well. You know, going back and listening to this show again, listening to this episode... 
uh, when I was doing the edit. It just, Iris's book and her story, it, it's been like a warm blanket. You know, it's really filled me full of comfort. And, uh, you know, I think it, uh, <laughs> it's like so many things that came together for her to come on this show in the first place, for her to find this show and come on. And we found so many things in common about each other and how this happened. And then here, once again, you know, I have my accident and now it's time for Iris's episode. It's like that little reminder that, hey, you know what, Jason, it's going to be okay. You're all right. And your wife is all right. And a car is just a car. Things are going to be fine. And <laughs> what can I say? I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good right now. But uh, let's get us on over to our interview with Iris Long right after a word from our sponsor. Jason here. Hey, I wanted to take a moment and tell you about my favorite writing tool, Scrivener. Now, I know you've heard about Scrivener because their writing software has been embraced by hundreds of thousands of other writers like you and I, from the novice to best-selling novelists. The reason we all use it is because of Scrivener's core concept to bring all the writing tools you use together in a single application. And with tools like automatic backup, character maps, project goals, and let's not forget that amazing corkboard, you can see why I use Scrivener every day. As a bonus for Sample Chapter Podcast listeners, use code CHAPTER for 20% off your desktop version. Scrivener Writing Software, built by writers for writers. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me on this very special Sample Chapter Podcast episode. Today, I am joined by a new friend, somebody who clearly there was somebody guiding us together. We, we believe we know who that was, but uh, I think it's going to be special for, the, uh, for you, the listener, to listen in and uh, you know, judge for yourself. I am speaking today with Christian nonfiction author Iris Long. Iris, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jason. I, I am honored and privileged to be here to share this story with you. The honor is all mine, and I tell you, it's, you know, I mean, we've already been on the call for the last 39 minutes, and it, it feels like we, we've we hardly covered anything, and yet we've talked so much already, and I'm, I'm just so excited to share this incredible book that you've put together. Oh, well, thank you. I, I've enjoyed talking to you, Jason. You know, I'm from the South, so we love to talk, and I... <laughs> I feel like I'm just sitting here having a glass of tea talking to a neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a wonderful talk and I I I almost feel bad because we've already spoken for so long and I don't want to take up your whole evening, but I'm glad we got to uh to get going with this. So now this is your first book, Showered by Grace. And yes. uh well, I guess first I should say is uh let the audience know a little bit about uh who you are before we get okay. going. Okay. I I am just a regular person. I have worked as a medical transcriptionist for 37 years, and now I'm an author. I um, am a mother and a grandmother. I have a son and a daughter and a grandson, and uh, life is just beginning for me at age 60, following this fantastic love story that I was blessed to live and then write about and now share with others. That's very, very nice. And I love how you're looking forward to so much more. When so many people are looking at this age to be slowing down and re retiring and, uh, you know, for that time of life when it's, okay, it's time to slow down. You're looking forward to more. And what's, yes. what is tomorrow going to bring me now? And yes. I just, I admire that so much. Yes. Well, the, um, you know, the, the Lord has worked with me and he's given me a whole different perspective of life. Every day is truly a gift, um, and we choose how we want to view it. And even if nothing special happens, there are small blessings in the day. If you look for them, you will find them. Moments of joy, moments of peace. In the midst of chaos, we have those. And we never know when the Lord's going to show up and do something grand. So when I get up in the morning, I say, thank you, Lord, for another day. And I expect to see you today. I want to see you today, Father. <laughs> <laughs> and many days I do, you know. <laughs> so life is good. It really is. You know, um, and it's so it is so short. Yeah. And you know, so I really appreciate life uh after what I've been through, especially. 
And But I do feel like life is just beginning. I don't ever want to feel like that uh, life is a drudge and I'm just waiting until mine's over. I don't ever want that mindset. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. No, I completely agree with you. And it's, I, I look forward to, I'm, I'm nearing 50 myself, and I just, I feel like I'm finally doing some of the things I've always wanted to do. And uh-huh. I never planned on doing this show. I always thought I'd be, be an author, and I'm finally doing that. But this show was something that I was, uh, you know, uh, kind of the same way. I was really led to do this show, and it's really turned into something I didn't expect. And I'm now I'm just I'm blessed myself to get to do this and speak to authors every week and uh, get to share their stories uh, like yours. Oh, that's wonderful, Jason. Yeah. You know, you know, those divine leadings, uh, you never know where they're going to take you Mm -hmm. and how they're going to grow. And that's I look at my book as a seed and every book that sells or every book that is passed around. I call it a seed. And I ask the Lord to speak to every person who reads the book and give them whatever they need to hear from him about. Because I've lived through a lot of different things in the book, uh, through childhood, young adulthood, and uh, then this incredible Cinderella love story. And now I'm single again, but I'm not alone. And, you know, that's one of the greatest gifts the Lord's given me through this is I never feel alone, ever. Mm -hmm. I am not lonely and I'm not alone I'm always aware of his presence, and uh, there's no greater peace or joy than that. And I suffered with loneliness when I was younger. I, I did. I suffered with that as a child and as an adult, a teen. And it's it's a terrible feeling. It's a it's just an emptiness that you can't uh, really feel. You try, but you can't. And I believe that's because it's uh, there's only one person that can fill that void. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's really, you know, it, it's sad that for so many of us there, it's not until later in life, uh, you know, the, the lucky few like myself, you know, we find love at a young age and we get to hang on to that for our lives. Um, but then you know, there's so many others who don't understand or really get to experience love until they're older. Mm-hmm. And at that point when that's, and, and that's when you bring it in and, I'm noticing that that is a recurring theme in your story, in your novel, in the way you live life is love is, is mm-hmm. clearly a, yes. a very, very big thing for you. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of courage to give your heart fully. And obviously just going over the, the reviews and reading about the book and hearing about it, as we've talked about it for the last, you know, 45 minutes already, there's a lot of love that went into this book. Yes, I felt I could feel God's love for me even as I typed. And sometimes even through the tears, I'm still aware of his love for me. Tears are a part of grieving. It's something the body has to go through. It's a it's a response to the grief. And it's healthy to express the tears and let them flow because they will stop eventually. Mm-hmm. They do. But the love still remains. It's still there. Um, I remember when my husband at the, his funeral, we were at the graveside uh, for service after the service at the funeral home, and as that casket was being lowered in the ground, I felt like at that moment, everything we had shared was going right down in the grave with him. And one of the first things I became aware of in the few days following was that, no, that love was still in my heart. It had not gone into the ground with him, and I still had the same memories. Those those will not die. They do not die. And um, there's something glorious about that for me that... Uh, that was still alive and the love has grown. It has really grown, not in a way that you're fixated on your dead spouse, but it has morphed into the, uh, the one who brought the love. Mm. So, mm -hmm. mm-hmm. And it carries you, it carries you through. It does. So, you know, Mm -hmm. well, and and we've already, we've kind of danced around the subject a little bit. And I think people listening may kind of guess a little bit of, of what the book is about, but go ahead and, and give us uh, the, the general picture of what, what Showered by Grace is about. Okay, this is a book of, of a person <laughs> with um, a broken life, a broken childhood, a broken life. I was married 16 years and my husband left and life went to hell. And I just lived in survival mode for nine years. And then out of the blue, for no reason that I had earned, 
love came into my life. Love came knocking on my door. It changed everything. Uh, we had three years of bliss. Everything was great. It was perfect. And then he was gone. In the blink of an eye, he was gone. And everything changed again. And all of the brokenness, the, the, the hard part of my grief was it triggered grief over all the losses and brokenness of my past. And that was worked out with the Lord through the next five years. And it brought complete healing of all of that. And that's what love does. Love heals. Love heals. Um, and when you truly experience real love, you want to give it. You don't want to just grab it and hold on all you can get for yourself. You want to share it and you want others to experience that love because it will change their their heart, their mind, their soul, their spirit. It will change their outlook, their views. Their Even their desires will change because of that. Mm -hmm. And I want to know that uh, it happened to a regular person and it's available for everyone. And maybe someone would be inspired by my story. They might connect with some of the things that have happened to me, some of the things I've gone through. And it would speak to them in a way that would encourage them and uh, help them see things differently, give them a different perspective. Uh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's, it, it's wonderful that you have, you know, through, through God's love, you found a way to bring forward some lessons for others and, and to find more love and share that love with those who, you know, maybe they've had similar experiences, uh, but they haven't learned to, come out the other side the way you have and uh, maybe this book will will help reach them yes i hope so i pray that it does i do jason every book i pray over every book that i have sent out to people i have prayed over it for the lord to speak to them as they read so whenever you sat down and you were you were ready to do this i, I know we were talking before that being an author was not something that you had planned to do you weren't this wasn't like a childhood goal like so many other mm -hmm. authors this was something that struck you one day you were you were led to do the writing now when you went to sit down and do this what was i mean what was that experience like to begin to relive the moments oh it was a journey within a journey uh, as I began to write about different events from childhood and adulthood and go back and relive the, oh, the pain of it and sometimes just the uh, despair of it, I experienced it all over again. Mm -hmm. And by the time I finished the book, I felt like I had been through a spiritual catharsis of my soul. Yeah. I had first healing even than when I started the book. And it was, uh, it was an experience. It was amazing. And sometimes I'll talk to the Lord and I would ask him, do I need to go into more detail about what I've shared? And sometimes he would give me things to add. And sometimes he'd say, you can talk about that later. So some things I go into detail about and some I don't give a lot of detail about. Mm -hmm. But I do mention everything from my past because the Lord told me that if I do not share everything, the book will have no effect. So if I, cause I wanted to skim over and just talk about the love story. And he said, no, you have to go into the, you have to bring out all of the dirt. And so that did. And I knew that it would be risky because there would be criticism. There would be shock. And I have faced some of that, but he prepared me for that. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it, Jason, is I'm not who I was in the past. I don't identify as who I was in the past. I lived it. It happened to me. But it's in the past, and that's not who I am. Yeah. That's not who I am. So I, that's not my identity. But I am sharing my experience because others have, have suffered as well. Other people have suffered, maybe not the same way, but the pain of it, the reaction to it, and the way it affected you, people will, I think, identify with those emotions. Oh, my goodness. Yes, 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 yes. So I agree so heartedly. Now, one of the things that really fascinated me and uh, was listen, hearing about how many things fell into place with this. Not even <laughs> not even fell into place, but they just kind of revealed themselves to you from writing the story to the picture, the, the cover on the book. Uh, 
to figuring out how to how to put the book out so it it all just kind of revealed itself to you in its time as it was needed yes tell us a little bit about this well that to be i'm still amazed at that because uh you know, I, the Lord led me through the writing because I didn't know how to write a book. And then when I finished the book and I edited it and I had someone else read it, um, then I said, okay, Lord, how are we going to publish the book? I don't know how to publish a book because I had heard about self-publishing versus a publisher, but I didn't have the money to do either one. And so I am sitting on my computer one day and uh, I had been up and down. You know, and I looked, I checked Facebook and there was a sponsored ad on my page for this Christian publisher offering a book giveaway contest. And I read the details and she does it once a year. And uh, it's a contest that runs a month and whoever has the most votes at the end of the month will be declared the winner. And I read that and first I clicked off of it. But then I felt prompted to go back and read it again. And I thought, well, you've been praying about a publisher. Maybe you need to follow through on this. So I did, and I won the contest. <laughs> so, then all I had to do was submit the manuscript to her, and then she had professional editors uh, take care of the book. In the meantime, I'm thinking about a book cover photo, and I had this photo on the book was already a part of my story, and so I contacted. I, I, it took me a while to find some contact information for the photographer because I only found one email address for him on some obscure site. I didn't even know if it was still current. But I sat down and composed a letter to him at that email address and prayed over it. And he wrote me back that night and called me the next day. Called me on the phone. Oh, he was so moved by what I wrote. And so we talked for a while. And then I ended up sending him some pictures of uh, my husband and I in our story. And he agreed to let me use this photo free. No fee. Just And I thought, I know the Lord had to do that because he he has his own website of all of his photographs. He takes photographs. He sells them. And he he could have easily charged or, you know, expected a fee for this, but he didn't. So I know the Lord did that, too. (laughs) It's amazing to me. And everything came into place at the time it was needed, not ahead of time, but at the time it was needed. Mm hmm. Because I started writing without knowing how it would be published, you know, how it would be published. Right. And I didn't know what the cup would look like. But at the time it was needed, it fell into place. So it's just a blessing. It really is. It really is, yeah. And that you held on to that faith and you didn't try to push it yourself. You didn't try to jump ahead and be like, oh, I need to be. Yeah. As an author myself, I know how easy it is to get halfway through the book and then go, I need to get my cover ready to go for my next book and then start worrying about that. And, Oh, I got to worry about how am I going to edit this? How am I going to let people Mm -hmm. know about this? And so that, that you kept your focus on the task at hand, just do one thing at a time and then go, you know, work on it as it came up. And then it all just kind of came, it worked out. And uh, it certainly, <laughs> you certainly had a hand in putting this book yes. together. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I did. And I know it's all him and I give him all the praise and all the glory because uh, I wouldn't have known how to do any of it uh, had he not guided me uh, and connected me to the people I needed to be connected to, um, you know, to get this book done. And um and I know that he will guide me with the next one. I'm not even worried about it. He's already proven. He's very faithful. Yes. Uh, you know, it's his story. So, of course, he wants it to go out, and he knows the, how he wants it to go. So I know that connecting with you is no accident. Um, and so I'm very thankful for this, this opportunity, Jason. I really am. <laughs> well, it's, I, I'm, I'm just thrilled, and I'm, I'm just giddy with excitement about how wonderful this this all is and uh you've already touched on it a little bit uh tell us a little bit about uh what you have planned with the uh, the second book okay um my book shower by grace ends with um my last night in goshen indiana which was in november of 2012 and i had made plans to relocate to knoxville tennessee where my son lived so i'd be closer to family i was still grieving but i mean 
still functional, but still grieving. And when I moved to uh, Knoxville, that began a different uh, chapter of my life. And then events happened there, and my journey with the Lord intensified, uh, much more focused one-on-one. And I learned a lot, and he's taught me a lot. And the thing about the Lord is he will teach you things about yourself that you don't know or that you never knew, things about yourself that you never understood correctly. But he'll give you revelations, and he does it in such precious ways that just touch your heart, and you don't forget them. You don't forget them, and it leaves you hungry for more. And so it is a journey of seeking him, seeking whatever my next step will look like, and growing in my knowledge of him. And I will tell you that in uh, July 4th of 16, the Lord made it possible for me to return to Goshen, and I had two book signings up here. But the big part of that weekend was he delivered me from my grief. When I left Goshen for that second time, I was completely healed of all of my grief and my pain. And uh, that was important to move forward from that point as well. So you never know what God's going to do. You never know what he's got planned. But I put myself in his hands and I let him work through me. And it's become the thrill of my life. Jason, I say that with all truth and honesty. He is the thrill of my life. He makes life exciting even on the most mundane days. You know, Iris, I, listening to all this, and it's, you know, there's going to be people who, you know, question people who, uh, you know, may not believe, and there's going to be plenty of those of those who do. Um, mm-hmm. I, I do believe, and I also believe that you are a very strong and determined woman with a lot of courage to, even though I know you believe in giving it all to God, but it takes a lot of courage to have the strength to do what you were doing and keeping that faith and getting to this point where you have this book that is touching lives. And I'm so honored to have met you through this show. Oh, thank you, Jason. You know, I, I always, uh, I can't do anything by myself, but Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if he has called us to do something, he will equip us to do it. He will, if we will just trust him. And I tell him all the time, Lord, you are everything. You are, you are my husband. I have no husband. You are my husband. You sustain the fatherless and the widow. His word says so. And I said, I look to you to take care of me and to guide me because I ask for that. I seek that from you. And he does. He does. And, you know, people, I know people don't believe in the Lord or they don't believe the things you say. And I didn't always believe. I was very skeptical because I felt like if God loved me, I would have had love as a child. But I have, I've grown from that. Uh, most people have experienced brokenness. Very few people come from well-adjusted, loving homes in this day, which is sad. I was born in 58 when most people had intact families, but I didn't come from a Christian home, and I did not have normal parents. But God still loved me. But I didn't understand that at the time. But he has, he can reveal himself to you, though, in a way that you will understand so much more than you do in your own thoughts and in your, because you're thinking from pain. You're thinking from loss. You're thinking from the point of, well, what if and if only and, and, and these types of things. But once you understand more about yourself and about life and about him, it, it becomes, um, it just becomes clearer. And the things that you once, you know, Focused on, you don't even worry about that anymore. That's not even a part of who you are. You can move on from things. You can. And I can move forward because I know he's going to hold on to me and he's going to help me. I believe that with all my heart, Jason. Uh, it's beautiful. And I, I I look forward to hearing you know the next part, uh, where where you go forward with the next story. I look forward to you know reading more reviews about how many other people that you've touched. Where can people find you online, and where can they follow you? Okay, I have a website, irisundergrace.com. I am on Facebook. Uh, Showered by Grace is the Facebook page for the book. And it's on Book Reads as well, but I don't really use Book Reads very much except as my own bookshelf. (laughs) (laughs) I read books and post reviews up there. Um, But, yeah, and the book is on Amazon. It's available on Amazon. It's also on the publisher's website, which is Hunter Entertainment Network. Uh, and then barnesandnobles.com, you can get it on there as well. 
I, again, Iris, thank you so much for having reached out to me and, you know, just, just the way that, <laughs> the way that you found me even just kind of, it, it goes to show that I, I was right from the start to have listened to that little voice inside me where I said, I want to have all kinds of people on here. I want to have authors <laughs> from all walks and I want to hear all of their stories. And, you know, it's, it's funny how doing that got a story out there that interested you, that brought you to me. And now I can, I can help bring you to other people. And I really hope, you know, people give the book a chance and uh, I know they're going to be touched by it. And I'm just, I'm just so blessed to have had you on the show. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you, Jason. It's been a privilege to be here and I've enjoyed talking to you very much. And so I thank you for this opportunity. This is my first experience and I've enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> so have I. So have I. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know what that means. It's time for me to step aside and hand the floor to my wonderful guest, Iris Long, with her first novel, Showered by Grace. I'm reading from Chapter 3, titled The Land of Goshen. Uh, this is, um, we are moving from Mississippi up to you know, Goshen, Indiana. We stopped only when necessary. Travel was slow with the large truck, and we both wanted to get home safely and not waste time during the drive. The weather was definitely colder as we neared northern Indiana. About 50 miles from Goshen, the snow was falling softly. Night had descended, and now there was a renewed sense of urgency to get home. Scott was weary from the drive and maneuvering the truck through traffic stops and fatigue was beginning to settle into me as well from the lack of sleep the previous night. The familiar exit sign appeared in my headlights and my heart jumped with excitement as the memories of my first visit danced in my head. Refreshed, I enjoyed the final miles of the journey with the snow falling against the night sky. My thoughts circled around the blessings of love God had brought and the major life changes in a relatively short time. My future with Scott looked bright and secure. We arrived safely. Most of the houses were dark on the street, and only the lamp posts were glowing. Everyone was asleep, unaware of the great event taking place at our house. God had orchestrated our meeting and our relationship. He had guided us through the past year with love and reassurance, and now he had brought us to this home to continue growing in that love. The movers arrived the next morning to unload, and then Scott and I returned the rental truck. The first thing Scott did was take me shopping for appropriate winter clothing and shoes, as my wardrobe was inadequate for this colder climate. I was incredibly happy at his concern for my health and safety. Within a few days, I had weatherproof shoes to keep my feet warm and dry, a much warmer winter coat, and appropriate gloves and socks. So began our life together in Goshen. Days of joy, peace, fun, laughter, and bliss. Life was in vivid color. We went everywhere and did everything together, holding hands, walking across parking lots, hugging and smiling at each other often. I was thrilled to be with Scott, and he was proud to be with me. I marveled many times at this special man who had been walking around unattached before we met. Surely I was not the only woman who could see the depth of Scott, his good qualities and strengths, his talents and abilities, besides his obvious physical attraction. Sometimes I looked in the mirror and wondered what Scott saw when he looked at me, wishing that I could see myself through his eyes. Wonderful, unexpected moments occurred randomly. Sudden mutual awareness would spring up between us and we would stop what we were doing and look at each other at the same time. Scott would pull me close and ask me, where have you been all my life? Smiling, I would touch his face and wonder, and reply, where did you come from? Though he was born in Bristol, Indiana, I truly believed part of Scott came from heaven. We knew God's hand was in all of this, and our love was special, powerful, and healing. We were in awe of him, our love, and each other. One evening, we walked out onto the front porch with a fresh cup of hot coffee in hand. Night had fallen, and there was a slight chill in the air as we settled into our chairs. Sipping our coffee and cunts, my mind drifted back into the past. I had never known love like Scott and I shared and did not know this kind of love even existed. My first husband, the father of my children, had loved me as I had loved him, and he was a good father and provider, but our relationship was completely different. The lack of emotional intimacy has spread into other areas of our marriage, 
and after 17 years led him to seek affection and love elsewhere. He moved out in 1995, and the divorce was finalized in January of 1996. The years that followed were hell. I lost everything that mattered to my heart. A part of me died when the dust finally settled, and I was completely alone. I functioned on autopilot. The pain morphed into numbness as life turned into bleak emptiness and extra work to make ends meet. A friend had suggested I needed to find someone to help me raise my children, but I had no interest in meeting anyone or dating. I paid my own way, working overtime, weekends, and holidays to cover living expenses, food, and basic needs. And I had sold the extra furniture and many things I had wanted to keep in order to live. I had prayed when the father of my children left the home, but had no faith in my own prayers and hoped against hope that maybe God would help me. I had not earned God's favor and doubted I would receive much help. I had felt insignificant in life from early childhood and had accepted that rejection as God's view of me. I was just another one of those throwaway kids who would never amount to anything. Those poor girls don't stand a chance, I overheard someone say at a family gathering when I was a child, and I never forgot those words. The people at church treated me just like my family. I understood the church to be God's house and the people who attended to be God's people. In my young mind, if they rejected me, then God rejected me. I did not fit in with my family or the church people. I had never fit in anywhere and was constantly aware that I was different. That perception crippled me with fear and insecurity the majority of my life. I had loved hearing the Bible stories about Jesus and singing all the songs we learned in Sunday school in childhood. My father dropped my sister and me off at Sunday school and picked us up during the years we lived with him. And once we started living with Aunt Lucy, we rode the church bus to a local Baptist church every Sunday morning. I wanted to believe that Jesus loved all the children of the world, but I did not have parents like everyone else. Life was not normal while I was growing up. Something was wrong with me because God did not love me as much as other children who did have parents and families. Now in my late 40s, God had brought a man into my life whose love far exceeded all my hopes and dreams. I was blessed to have a man I loved, respected, trusted, and desired deeply. Scott took my hand, and we walked off the porch into the yard under the night sky. All the past hurt, anger, disappointment, betrayal, and resignation washed over me as I stood hand in hand with this wonderful man. I did not understand why God had chosen to bless us so amazingly. Perhaps we had gone through enough heartache in our lives to earn some love and joy. Happiness and gratitude filled my heart as I gazed up at the stars. Wow. That was Iris Long reading a sample chapter from her debut Christian nonfiction book, Showered by Grace. Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, the book is going to move you to tears. It's tears of sadness, tears of joy, all the above. Make sure you click the links to check out the book and to follow Iris. Don't forget to also click the links on our sponsors and friends of the show. And don't forget to also hit that subscribe button so that way next week you don't miss out when we come back with a new author, a new book, and a new sample chapter. You never know who that author might be. We'll see you again real soon, everyone. Take care. <laughs>